So today we're gonna start out with range of motion of the hip, knee, and ankle. Okay, range of motion of the hip, knee, and ankle. Now, we already know a little bit about range of motion because we learned shoulder on Monday. The process is exactly the same. When you're doing any range of motions, you have to look at the care plan to find out what uh, exercises we need to perform, what extremity we need to perform those exercises on, and how many repetitions to do. And not all care plans are going to be the same. You might have a care plan in room two that tells you to do range of motion of the hip and knee, but only flexion extension. You might have a range of motion care plan on room eight that tells you to do range of motion of the hip, knee, and ankle, but they, that patient needs flexion extension, abduction, adduction, and rotation. So it's super important that you pay attention to that care plan. It will be different for everybody based on their own level of ability. The other thing that I need to explain to you about range of motion is that there's two kinds of range of motion. There's active and passive. Now, active range of motion is when you ask the patient to do the exercises, and they do them, and you critique them. So you would say something like, uh, Mr. Jones, we need to do some active range of motion. I need you to extend your left arm above your head like you're asking a question. And then the patient will extend their arm up and you would say something like, okay, I need you to straighten that elbow, get it nice and straight for me and bring it down. So you're giving prompts, they're doing the work, you're making sure it's done correctly. That's active range of motion. And you will be asked to do that occasionally in a clinical setting. Um, we do this a lot in the activity room uh, with uh, different types of exercise uh, routines and uh, things to get the patients involved in a little bit more creative and fun way than just, you know, boring exercises. But passive range of motion is what we learned on Monday. Passive range of motion means the patient isn't doing the work we are. And that's what CNAs do more often in a clinical setting is passive range of motion. So this means that we're doing all the work. So when we are helping patients with passive range of motion, you wanna lift from below with flat palms. We're not the claw machine at Walmart, right? We're not gonna pick something up like this because then your fingertips dig into them and that can leave bruising and damaged tissue. So we always lift below with flat palms and you wanna support at the joints. So when we did range of motion of the arm, we supported at the elbow and the wrist. You always have to have two places of support. So the elbow and the wrist. Now today we're gonna to learn range of motion on the hip, knee, and ankle. We're gonna lift below, but we're gonna support at the knee and the ankle as we lift. Okay, range of motion, hip, knee, and ankle. So this is what we need to know. Those of you who have your white book, this is on page 57 of your white book, so you can open up and read along. So our care plan tells us to provide the following range of motion to the resident's right, remember we have to know which one we're working on, right or left, right, hip, knee and ankle. Flexion extension. Now, if you remember on Monday, we learned that flexion extension is up-down motion. We're going to provide three repetitions of, of the exercise, and the resident is not able to help with the exercises. And if you look here, it says passive. So we're going to do the, uh, the work for the patient. Now, if you go down here to the bottom, you can see for the test that this should take about four minutes. It will be done on a live student. That student will be in bed and no charting is required. On this page, it gives you step-by-step -step directions on exactly how to do this skill. And then up here, you have a gray box that has the um, kind of the Cliff Notes version, the, the, the short version. So that is our care plan for this skill. Now, something I wanna show you guys that we have available is um, to make it a little bit easier for you to learn a lot of these skills. I have these flashcards that you can order. They're on my website and there's 53 flashcards. They're full color, but they have um, a card for each skill that you learn how to do. And that gray box that you just saw is actually on the flashcard. So you can learn all of those steps, the abbreviated steps 
by getting the flashcards. But there's more to it than that. We also have supply flashcards that are in here as well that goes over the supplies that you need for each skill. And then those principles. Remember that we learned the opening. You guys remember that opening? All the steps that were in the opening. This lists all of those steps so that you can memorize them and learn them. And these flashcards are available for you um, if you wanted to order them, or you can just get some uh, index cards and make your own. Um, you know, writing something out helps you remember it. But if you wanted something that's easy for you to take with you and learn on the go, we do have these available on our website. But you need to learn those gray boxes because that's how you're gonna review the skill at the end to kind of remember, did I do all of those steps? So having these gray boxes will make it super easy for you to um, mentally review as you uh, perform the skill. So this, uh, on page 57, this care plan tells us to perform flexion extension. Now, if you remember on Monday, we learned that flexion extension is a straightening and a bending of a body part at the joint. So when we're doing flexion extension of the hip and knee, it's going to be done together. So the hip and knee are going to be exercised at the same time. It's a two for one exercise. So I'm gonna back up here so that you can see real quick and I'm gonna to turn to the side. So if you look at me standing here, you can see that my leg is straight. Your leg is in the extended position normally. That's its kind of default position is extended. But if I bend the knee up to my chest, kind of like I'm climbing stairs, if I bend my knee up to my chest, you can see that both my knee and my hip bend at the same time. And then if we straighten it back out, that's back to extension. So when you're doing range of motion of the hip, knee, and ankle, the patient is laying in bed, you're gonna lift the leg up, supporting at the knee and the ankle, and you're gonna bend that knee and bring it up to the chest, which bends both the hip and the knee, and then all the way back down to the bed. Remember, you have to go all the way to the start position. You wanna make sure you're providing support and moving slowly to make sure that there's no pain for the patient. And we'll do that three times. So knee to the chest, back down to the bed. Knee to the chest, back down to the bed. Knee to the chest, back down to the bed. Then we're gonna work on the ankle. Now, when Flexion extension is done on the ankle. Remember, that's a straightening and bending. So what we're gonna do, if, if you've got the foot on the bed, you're gonna bend the toes forward and then back toward the head. Forward and back toward the head. But you don't want the heel to scrape against the sheet as you do that, because that can, that can irritate the skin, it can cause sores, skin tears, things like that. So you wanna lift the heel off of the bed while you're bending and flex or and straightening. Uh, any questions? No. Oh, you have some. No. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to show you this video again. I don't have a live person that I can put in the bed to uh, to show you these skills. So I'm going to show you the video. Um, I'm going to mute you before I show you the video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Mr. Jones, my name is Patty. I'm your CNA today. How are you? Doing great. How about you? Wonderful. I need to do some exercises on your right hip, knee, and ankle. Is that okay? Yes. I'm going to close your curtain. Let me go wash my hands and I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do all the work. All you have to do is let me know if there's any pain or discomfort as we do this, okay? Okay. The first exercise is going to bend your knee up to your chest and back down to the bed like you're climbing stairs. Okay. We'll do this three times. Okay. Please let me know if there's any pain. All right. I'm going to support under the knee and under the ankle, and we're going to lift and bend all the way up and all the way back down. Feel okay? Yes. We're going to do this again, 
all the way up and all the way back down. Still okay? Yes. One more. All the way up and all the way back down. Next exercise we're going to do will be on your ankle. I'm going to lift your foot off the bed and we're going to bend forward and backward like you're stepping on a gas pedal. Okay. We'll do this three times. Okay. So I'm going to lift and we'll bend forward and backward one, forward and backward two. Feel okay? Yes. And one more. Okay, any pain or discomfort? No. Is there anything else I can get for you while I'm here? No. Magazine perhaps? No, thank you. Okay, let me get your call light for you and I'm going to open the curtain. All right, thank you. Here's your call light. If you should need anything at all, please let me know. Thank you. I'm going to go wash my hands. After washing my hands, I'll review the steps of my skill, make any corrections, and tell the evaluator my skill is done. Okay, let me unmute you. Any questions on that? Okay. Any questions? No, no ma'am, thank no. you. No. Okay, so according to this care plan, how many repetitions do we have to do? Three. 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 Will it always be three? No. Three. No, no. Depends, on the, depends on the injury. That is correct. It depends on the patient, so we have to follow the care plan. Very good. If I got you to understand nothing else, I got you to understand the care plan, and that will help you pass the test because the, the test is all about following the care plan. That's what they're grading you on, and as long as you're following that care plan, you will be just fine.